What is going on, Swoopers? Welcome back to another episode of Swoop Luke. In this episode, we'll be reviewing the amazing Friday night win against the Demons. Let's get into it. So on Friday night, which was feels like a lifetime away now, Pies took on the Demons, uh, vying for 11 in a row. There was a lot of talk that we, you know, we're only beating bottom teams. That's who we were fixtured against. So what can you do? But we could prove ourselves against the best of the best and who is better than the reigning premiers at the moment. Coming off a huge win against Fremantle and we were coming off a, you know, a thereabouts win against um, Port Adelaide. It was the biggest stage for one of the biggest games of the home and away season and probably the biggest home and away game that I can remember in recent memory for Collingwood. And we just, we just showed the football world that we're here to play and now we are 11 games in a row winning on a winning streak and we're sitting second on the ladder, clear second on the ladder. That may change, but at the moment, we are outright second on the ladder and beat the reigning premiers at their own game. And these one tree ponies have so many more up their sleeve. So we started out pretty much goal for goal. Melbourne, you know, got in front by a little bit. We started pegging our way through some amazing, just sort of skill, Pendlebury, Jamie Elliott with his tackling pressure you know, inside the 450, Bo McCreary, Cameron and Cox were doing well in the ruck. Ash Johnson. There was a lot of individual performances in that first half, but we still looked pretty... Uh, not terrible, but we still looked pretty bad because we just weren't playing the way we should be playing, and Melbourne were just having run of the game. They had so many inside 50s, and thankfully they couldn't convert, and our defence held up really well because old Collingwood we would have got done by 30, 40 points, but this Collingwood just fights until the end. One thing I did like from this game was our accuracy in front of goal. We kicked 15 goals, six behinds, um, which is incredible. Up until halftime, we were eight goals, two. Melbourne were 10 goals, seven. So you can see how it worked in our favor. Um, we ended up for the night kicking 10 goals, one, which is absolutely huge. So... Melbourne were up by, I think, about 20-something points at one stage, and you kind of go, okay, do the Pies have it in them again? And I know I always talk about, you just got to believe this team, but in, it's, it's, it's classic. It's just being a classic Collingwood supporter, but far out. This team is just incredible. They're incredible. And it wasn't until that second half where Collingwood really, really clicked into gear. In that second half, Melbourne only kicked three goals, whilst the Pies kicked three goals in the third quarter and four goals in the last. And that last quarter was just something else. I was talking to my dad um, after the game, and I was saying that the Pies now, and, and you know, we've known this for a couple of weeks, but the Pies are conditioned to run these games out and sort of dig in and win these types of games because this is what we've been doing for the last 10 or so weeks. Other teams haven't been in this position constantly, week in, week out, where they, you know, need to hold the ball, ball in, in their 450 for five minutes or whatever it was, like we were doing in that last quarter. Um, the Pies are conditioned to win these games, and that's what I love, because these are the games where previously we would lose, and even Craig McRae came out and said that you need to play every single minute against us to win. I don't think teams are going to be comfortable going into the last quarter unless they're 40, 50, 60 points up when, you know, Maybe, you know, needing 10 goals in the last quarter, you go, okay, Pies aren't coming back. But if the Pies need four or five goals, they are just going to fight tooth and nail all until that final siren goes, and then she's all over. That's how we're winning our games. And that is, it's not even luck anymore. That's spirit, that's belief, that's willingness, that's just love for the club, love for one another, and wearing those black and white stripes with absolute pride, because... This team isn't just a team, it's it's a family, and you can see what they're building. Um, and and that wins you games, it wins you finals, and it's a very exciting time. In saying all that, it would be stupid for me to sit here and just talk about all the positives, because there's a lot that we can tighten up, and we learn going. Sometimes I say, you know, learning uh, in a loss is, is a lot better, because losing, you see what you've done wrong. But like Fly said, learning excuse the pun, but learning on the fly is just as good, and that's what we've been doing for the last 11 weeks. But look at some of these stats. Inside 50s, 65 to 41, Melbourne's way. Handballs, 208 to 99. Um, we had a little bit more kicks. Obviously, they had a lot more disposal. 
Inside 50 efficiency, we were 56%, which is great. Um, hit outs we lost, but clearances, 53 to 31. Now, we know that we're uh, shit outs at clearances. We lost the center clearances, 21 to seven. Now, Gorn Jackson, two amazing Ruckmans. Gorn's the best Ruckman in the competition. We're gonna be without Grundy for the rest of the season. Um, Petrarca, Oliver, Viney, Brayshaw, all these guys winning it out of the center. It, it was beautiful to see if you're a Mavin supporter, but that's where we were just getting killed. 21 to seven center clearances is something that we definitely need to tighten up. Um, our turnovers were good, only 63 turnovers compared to 71. Um, we controlled the game a lot, and we, I talked about in my preview about you need to pressure Melbourne, and that's exactly what we did. Let me get the stat up here. We laid 18 tackles in our forward 50 to Melbourne's eight, and then throughout the game, 71 tackles to 59. So we did exactly what the Bulldogs were able to do a couple of weeks ago, but what Fremantle were incapable of doing a couple of weeks ago as well. So Melbourne, hit them where it hurts, lots of pressure. So I can probably say that most of those tackles inside our 50 came in that last quarter, mainly that last five or so minutes of play where the pressure was just like something I haven't seen before. And this team, it just keeps going to another level. To be able to, well, I think at that point we were six points up. So to be able to keep it in our forward line for whatever it was, three, four or five minutes, tackles, stoppages, tackles, stoppages, tackles, stoppages, is just putting another, um, what's the saying? Another notch in our, another notch in our belt, I guess, um, where it's just another weapon that we're able to use going forward. And like I said earlier on in this video, no team is conditioned like we are to win these close games. And I'm, I am actually am confident now, and this probably will bite me on the ass, but touch wood, I'm confident now that whenever a game gets like this, we're going to win it, because that's just the belief that I have in this club now. Individual performances, there were a lot of players that stood out. Jamie Elliott's four goals, Ash Johnson's four goals. Crisp was just taking on the game, had eight tackles. Bo McCreary had seven tackles after not having a touch up until halftime. Then he came out, hit it hard like the rest of the team did. Patrick Lipinski played well. Uh, Mason Cox and Darcy Cameron. Jordan Ngoi had an unforgettable night. Just, look, I'm, 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 this season I've been umming and ahhing, like do we keep him, do we not? Uh, we could get a top 10 pick, but then if mixed day comes, blah, 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 blah. If he can produce those uh, sort of performances that he has, um, even against Adelaide, he did start slow, like I, like I mentioned, and, you know, 50% of his uh, disposals weren't efficient, but still had a decent game. But yesterday, oh, sorry, on Friday night, it just proved that if he gets his head right, he can be a phenomenal player. And we've seen him do this um, in bursts has to keep it sustained, and it'll go a long way in September. Nick Dacos, another 31 disposal game, but it wasn't even that, you know. I think he had about five tackles as well. It was 10 intercept possessions. The next best was Jeremy Hale with nine, Chris with six, Maynard with six. Everybody in this team stood up, and when it looked like Melbourne were just going to blow us away, what was it, 60 in, or 65 inside 50s uh, to our 40, or whatever it was, the defense just stood up. Nick Dacos is a big part of it, Jeremy Hale, Darcy Moore. Nathan Murphy, look, I could name every single player. Um, everyone just had a fantastic freaking game on Friday. And it, I don't want to say it, but it's going to be an exciting, exciting couple of games coming up. On the injury front, Will Hoskin Elliott went down. I think it's a hip flexor or a groin injury uh, tomorrow night. So, or Tuesday night, uh, we will find out what actually happened. I think if it is a bit of an injury, I think that's the same one that Taylor Adams did, um, or Taylor Adams did his groin. But if it's a couple of weeks out, who do we bring in for him? Do we bring in Ollie to play that sort of similar role, Will Hoskin Elliott, but push him up the ground a little bit more? Or do we bring in someone like a Will Kelly, uh, full back, you know, give a, another tall down back? Or do we bring in another midfield? I don't know. It's, it's gonna be hard, and, and thankfully I'm not on the selection committee. But I just want to end this video by saying that Friday night was probably the best win we've had all season. I think it was even better than the Essendon win. Essendon win was great, obviously, like, goddamn. But I think what I love the most about Friday night's win was that we were able to do it against the reigning premiers. And for everyone saying, oh, let's all play out, uh, let's all vote Melbourne. I think Melbourne's going to win. Collingwood have just 
you know, they're just being the bottom teams and 10 in a row, it's all luck, it's all luck, it's all luck. Now they actually have to stand up and listen because beating the reigning premiers, after they were up by 20-something points, clawing them back, winning the way that we did, there's a hunger in this football club that I haven't seen for about 10 years. Yes, even counting 2018. This week, though, we versed the Sydney Swans. This is the race for the top four. We win, we get a top four spot guaranteed. I don't know where we'll be finishing, but top four spot is guaranteed. So we have to beat Sydney. Um, we, we just have to because our percentage is crap. So we need to beat Sydney in Sydney. But that'll be for the preview. Anyway, guys, let me know your thoughts down below. I'm sorry that this has been um, such a late video. It's Monday night when this gets released. I think it'll probably get, yeah, it'll drop late, late Monday night. So um, I do apologize. But uh, look, let me know your thoughts down below. As always, I love to hear them. But until then, like, comment, subscribe, tell your family, tell your friends, stay pest, and I'll see you next time. Double shackers. I'll see you later.